I just want, uh, I guess, people to just know that, like, especially if you're starting a business um, or thinking about starting a business or wherever you are in your business journey, that, like, there's going to be some setbacks and there's going to be some struggles. But as long as you believe in what you're doing and you you're, you're have, have fun with it, you know, like that nothing that you're going to do is going to cause so many or such a big problem in your life that you're not going to be able to overcome from that. And I think that it's better to try things and maybe fail or learn from them and and get up and try again than to live a life filled with regret because you didn't try something. This is The Entrepreneur Way with Neil Ball. Unlocking the secrets of successful entrepreneurs seven days a week. Subscribe to our podcast and follow us on Twitter at Neil D. Ball. Napoleon Hill said the power of the mastermind is the driving force. To discover how you can unlock the potential in your business using the power of a mastermind, go to mastermindunlimited.com. And now, here is your host, Neil Ball. Hello, it's Neil Ball. Thank you so much for joining me today on The Entrepreneur Way. The Entrepreneur Way is about the entrepreneur's journey, the vision, the mindset, the commitment, the sacrifice, failures and successes. I am so excited to bring you our special guest today, Josh Solar. But before I introduce you to him, I have a quote for you. Don Miguel Ruiz said, Don't make assumptions, find the courage to ask questions and to express what you really want. Communicate with others as clearly as you can to avoid misunderstandings, sadness and drama. With just this one agreement, you can completely transform your life. The Entrepreneur Way asks the questions so we all get the insights, inspiration and ideas to apply in our businesses. Josh, Welcome to the show. Are you ready to share your version of the entrepreneur way with us? Sure I am. Thank you for coming on the show, Josh. Josh Solar is a professional encourager, a joy bringer and a warrior of happiness. He has a photography business and a greetings card business. He is married to his high school sweetheart and they have three amazing kids who they love to travel with as much as possible. Josh Can you provide us with some more insights into your business and personal life to allow us to get to know more about what you do and who you are? Yeah, well, I've been an entrepreneur pretty much uh, my whole life, I like to think. I mean, I worked odds and end jobs uh, through college and stuff like that, but there's always something inside of me that said I wanted to work for myself and and be my own boss. Um, And so ever... At the first opportunity I had, my wife and I started a photography business and kind of fell into that. We had no clue what we were going to do as far as what type of entrepreneurs we're going to be. But we started out as photographers and we've been doing that for 14 years now. Um, And seven years into that, we kind of took a pivot and tried to say, hey, let's find something that's not as... um, it doesn't require us to be in a specific place on a specific time that pulls us away from our family. And so we've started ever since then uh, on this journey of like trying to find something where we can work remotely or from wherever we want. Um, And so that's what had led us to starting a greeting card company just through art and stuff like that. And we just, I love to encourage people and to let people know that they're loved and that they matter. Um, And I feel that any time that, uh, you have an opportunity to um, brighten someone's day that, that I want to take that. And so my, my whole goal and being an entrepreneur and in my life and my purpose is to kind of encourage people. So the, you, you've got a greeting card, greetings card company. So how do you sell those cards? Is it online or do you sell them through retail stores? Yeah, we actually have a few different uh, channels. So we do a monthly greeting card subscription is one way. And so every every month I create five to ten new cards. And um, the, the greeting card subscription is basically five new cards that I do all of the artwork for every month delivered to your door. Um, we sell through stores and it's a, it's a fairly new business. We've been around for, oh, 18 months now. And so we're not in as many shops as we'd like to be, but that's what we're really focused on is, is growing our business on the wholesale side. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. So you, you, we, you, 
So you don't, so people can't buy them online from you, is that? Yes, we do. We sell them online too. So we have a, an Etsy shop that you can go and you can buy the greeting cards. You can do the monthly subscriptions, or you can go to uh, various stores around around the state. So when you talk about your subscriptions, I, I just I think I was looking at your website, and when I, when I looked at it, I just thought, well, you can subscribe for cards. Can you actually can you subscribe to card for cards for for events during the year? Because that'd be a great idea if you could set it up so you've got your Christmas cards ordered, your birthday cards ordered, your Valentine cards ordered, and whatever cards you send out during the year, so they just automatically appear when they're supposed to. <laughs> that that would be cool. I have we haven't set that up yet, but um, you're actually the first person that uh, has suggested that. I do know um, every year we make, you know, new cards based on the different holidays and stuff. And so uh, in the monthly cards, for example, when you get your monthly subscription, you'll get like a Christmas card or uh, for the February box of cards, there's always like a Valentine's Day card in there. So we we include one or so. And then if if people want to purchase more, I mean, we sell sold bulk packs and things like that. But people have always just emailed and asked if they could get them that way. Mm. But if you you did a subscription service like I've just talked about there, it'd be great to be able to just sit there and plan the words and everything you're going to do in one go. And then automatically these things just automatically get delivered as they're supposed to at the time they're supposed to get delivered. I'm sure lots of people would like that. Totally. Totally. (laughs) And what I'll do you, write that one down. <laughs> what do you enjoy most about what you do, Josh? Um, really, I love uh, the freedom and uh, and creativity that I get to to you know work and live with on a daily basis. So um, if I wake up and I, I don't feel like working from home, I, I have the freedom to go work from wherever I want. Um, I, I, I feel that if I don't do anything as far as like doodling or writing or drawing or painting or anything like that. If I go so many days without doing any of those things, I kind of feel like something is missing in my life. And so I feel that, uh, the way that our life is set up now, uh, gives me the freedom to do that. And, um, also spend a lot of time with, with my family and my friends. Um, and so I would say that would be what I enjoy most is just having the freedom to basically plan my day however I see fit and that I get to do uh, use my creative part of, your, part of my brain. So you talked about doodling and painting and you've also done photography in the past. Do you actually design your own cards with those skills? Uh, yeah, I kind of fell into all of that. Like I, I, I went to school, I have a master's in entrepreneurship, but uh, I never I never – took any photography classes or any sort of art classes. So everything just kind of came to me from just exploring and saying, well, I like to write, I like to draw, I like to paint all this different sort of things and just stuff that I just did every day over time kind of turned into a business that we never thought would happen. So where'd you get your ideas from for the cards that you create? Uh, Music, uh, my kids, movies, conversation with friends, um, they, I just feel there's so much, uh, negativity out in the world and, and people are, are hurting and they sometimes feel alone and they don't have a place to, to reach out or, 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 or maybe they, they hold their struggles inside. Right. And so, uh, one of the things that I, I don't like small talk in my conversations. And so my friends know that when we're together, I'm going to actually, when I say, how are you doing or, whatever, like I'm going to actually dive in and want to know how they're doing. It's, it's not the, Oh, the weather's nice or you stay in busy kind of conversations. Um, and so just in our conversations there, like I just messages just come to me and I, and I, and words that I'll say to them just to encourage them and to let them know that they're not alone in their struggles and that they're okay. Um, and I like to tell people that, and I think other people want to want to have ways to tell people that too. And so a lot of my art deals with that sort of encouragement and, and love, I guess. Mm. So do you, do you still do your photography as well? Uh, yeah, we we were shooting 20 to 25 weddings a year and doing family pictures throughout the year. And now we're down to five or 10 weddings. Um, we've done more commercial work lately. Uh, so like we've shot some, some uh, campaigns for Disney and we did one for Alamo uh, rental cars. And so those are, those are a lot of fun because they always involve travel. So um Photography has just been a consistent source of income for us while, while we're trying to build these other types of businesses that, that we have, if that makes sense. Yeah. What is it that drives you? Uh, my family and um, 
creating memorable experiences with them. Uh, like we just got back from Thailand. I have three kids. They're 11, nine and seven. Um, and that was really our first, uh, overseas trip. But in the States we've done, we do a lot of road trips and we've seen 37, uh, States now by car. Um, so we just creating these memorable experiences and just being with my family and the ones I love. Mm -hmm. Um, also, I think I touched on this a bit. What else drives me is just like the inherent goodness of people and, and letting them know that they're good. Like that, that is my mission every day is like, how can I find one or two or however many people I can, how can I encourage them? How do you relax when you're not working in your business? Um, I do a lot of meditation. Um, so I try to meditate, uh, couple times a day, 10, 20 minutes at a time, uh, lots of doodling, um, being outdoors. Uh, I love to just like, if it's sunny, I'll just go on my back deck and just lay down on the ground and just soak up the sun rays. Um, pretty much if, if it's, uh, if it's, if it's outdoors, I, I, I'm in, I love kayaking in the, in the winter when it's warm or in the summer when it's warm enough. Do you have any entrepreneurial role models? Um, yeah, there, I, I do have a couple, um, there's a guy named Richie Norton who uh, I met at a conference, a uh, photography conference years ago, and um, he's, a, he's a speaker and, a, and an author, and his book is called The Power of Starting Something Stupid, and it's one of my favorite books. He's one of my favorite guys in the whole world. Um, and then there's another guy that uh, he actually, I found him because he writes kids' books, but as far as uh, artists go, um, he is by far my favorite, and his name is Dallas Clayton. And, uh, so he's an author and illustrator and again, like he just does really, really good stuff. Um, and anytime that I interact with either of those people in any, whatever form I get to interact with them in, I always walk away feeling encouraged. Josh, what I'd like to do now is talk to you about the time before you were an entrepreneur. What difficulties did you have to overcome when you started your business? Um, well, uh, when we started our photography business, it was one of those things that uh, my wife and I had shot a wedding just because we had a camera and a friend couldn't afford to hire like an uh, actual photographer and they did pictures weren't that important. So um, we didn't really know what we were doing and um, we didn't know how to run a photography business and, and all that stuff. And so as far as difficulties, we just didn't really know anything. Um, and I would say that that that's the same thing with the card business. Like we had, we had been a service based industry for or service based business for, you know, 12, 13 years. And then we started more of like a product base. And so everything that we had to do, just like in photography, we had to learn on the fly. Um, and as far as, uh, the difficulties, I would say again, like we didn't know what we were doing. So we made some mistakes and, uh, we didn't really focus on how to make, the most money or we weren't looking at like what did stuff cost or how much was our time worth? Um, things like that. Um, and we also struggled, uh, finding people to really help us. And we didn't really know what to ask, even if we did have people that were willing to help us. Um, I will say though, that, that in starting our businesses, uh, my wife, she, she works with me as well. Like we're, we, everything we do is together. Um, the one thing that we've done is we've learned is that like, even if, you make a mistake, like you're not defined by your mistakes and that you can always pivot and that it's better to just try things, even though you don't know the outcomes and just go all in, you know, and, and you're always free to pivot and not, no mistake that you're going to make is going to be so catastrophic that you, I don't, at least for us anyway, like we haven't made any catastrophic mistakes. Did you have any doubts that delayed you starting your business? Um, not really. Uh, one of our, one of our friends says, uh, constantly like feel the fear and do it anyway. And we've kind of adopted that as our, as our, as our mantra as one of those things that, you know, as far as doubts and things like that go, I mean, they, they do come up, but I don't let them, I don't let them stop me from, from trying things. If that makes sense. Yeah. Um, you know, I constantly doubt like, uh, or I, I struggle as an artist with the thing like, Oh, this person's better at this than I am, you know, that whole comparison type thing. And I feel that if you, if you get, get caught up in those, it's going to keep you from just being the awesome version of yourself that you are. 
Um, and so I try not to listen to those voices of doubt and things like that. And I know that, I know that what I'm doing comes from a good place. And so, and that I have things to offer. And so I just kind of do what makes me happy and, and try and not worry about doubts or regrets or any of those things. What mistakes did you make that slowed your journey? Um, well, my wife and I are very, uh, big on trying to do anything ourselves. And so I think that that's a, a, a mistake in sometimes, and it's been a, and it's been good in others. And so, um, for example, with the cards, we can take our own product photos and we can do our, we know enough about branding and things like that, that we did all of the branding and design and for our website and our, in our card company. Um, but on those same lines where it's a mistake is that it slows us down in our growth because, uh, I struggle with marketing and selling of, of things. Um, I'm really good at building good, good connections, like genuine connections through social media and through in-person interactions, stuff like that. But when it comes to like selling and the, and the marketing, it's like, that's definitely my weak point. And we've waited a long time to actually say, okay, we need somebody else to do this for us. So how do you decide what designs are going to be popular and what designs aren't going to be popular with the card designs that you create? Um, that's, you know, honestly, I just kind of, make stuff that makes me happy and I share it, um, through Instagram and I can tell just by the audience that we have there, whether, okay, this would be a good card design or not. So like I said, I share a lot of doodles and things like that and stuff that I've drawn. And if, if people are, uh, interact with it and comment and like it and things like that, then I'm like, okay, there's something here and I can, I could put this on a card. Um, also uh, again, like a lot of my stuff, it's very, um, so I do watercolors. Um, I do, I had some cards have made just with Sharpie, um, like doodles and things like that. Some of them are made digital, um, on the computer. And so there's, they're, they're very, uh, different and unique. I know a lot of designers that you see or whatever will have one specific theme that they do. And it might be, they're really good at hand lettering stuff. And, and so I'm, I think that I'm not great at any of the stuff, but I'm good enough in all of them. And what happens is, is that people are really drawn to the messages and that, that, that come with the cards. So that's, that's a great idea using social media to test the, the design before you actually, so do you actually print the cards? Is that what you do with them when you read? Uh, yeah. Them? Yeah. Yeah. We order them. We order them from a company. Um, we have a supplier for the cards. Like we don't do the printing at home. But, uh, yeah, and we can order in quantities as low as six. So, again, um, we don't, you don't have to order, you know, hundreds of cards, and then you're stuck with a card that's not going to sell. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, because obviously if you get a design wrong and nobody wants to buy it, you, you've effectively just lost all that money on those cards, haven't you? Yeah. Um, I will say another thing that we do that, that was unique when we started the card stuff that goes with this is that um, – we would, we have on our website that you can buy just a 10 pack of, uh, you are loved cards. And so what that is, is basically it's just a 10 pack of whatever cards we choose. And so sometimes what we'll do is if there's one design that we might have a lot of, um, when people buy a 10 pack, we'll just throw like one of those in there. Right. And so they'll get, they, they get a diverse, like a really diverse group of cards, but that's a way that we can get rid of some that are either older designs that we're trying to phase out, or if we have some that just aren't selling. Yeah if that makes sense. And so like a lot of times if you go to, a, you know, a card companies would try and sell them one at a time or to stores and stuff. But by us having that outlet of like, you can get just a 10 pack of cards and then you don't have to pick because we have hundreds of cards that you could choose from already. So. What are some of the things that you did before you started your business that'd be helpful tips to some of the listeners who haven't yet taken the first step on the entrepreneur way? Well, uh, my wife and I are kind of people that, uh, we just try stuff. Um, and so I think that there's a, there's a lot of people that have some really, really, really good ideas and they just get overwhelmed by the steps that it takes to get started, you know? And so it's like, well, I need to do this, 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 and this, that's too much work. I'm overwhelmed. I'm done. And then there's like just a great idea that's just not going to come into existence because, they didn't take the first step. And so one of the things that my wife and I do is we have a a monthly business meeting where we sit down and we say, okay, what do we need to work on? Um, what do we need to, what do we need to do this month? What's our, what's our one month, three month, five, you know, six months goals and things like that. Um, 
And we've done that from the get go. And so what that does is that breaks up everything into actionable steps and it breaks things down. And I think that when you do that, especially before you're started, you don't get overwhelmed and let that overwhelm keep you from doing something that your heart knows that you want to do. Yeah. Josh, what I'd like to do now is talk to you about the entrepreneurial journey a little bit. So do you think culture is important from the beginning in a business? Uh, yeah, I, I think it's, it, it's very important actually. Um, I like to work in a fun environment. So with that, for me, um, that's, you know, bright colored walls. I mean, the, the room where we work is a, a big, uh, it's like this bright aqua and, and then purple, um, painted. And then there's a coral as well splash in there. Uh, there's always like loud kind of fun, upbeat music going. Um, and that's where I pretty much work and draw and do everything all day. If, if I'm feeling, uh, a little uh, restless. I'll go where I have different coffee shops and things like that, where I'll go and sit and work and draw and talk to friends and stuff like that. But I think culture is super important. And, uh, for me, I like to have things that inspire me hanging up on the wall, on my wall. So either art prints from other people or other artists or stuff that I've done. And so just like being hit with things that are encouraging and bright and fun keeps in that, in that culture, I guess, for me, like that's part of the culture for where for where I like to work because it keeps me it helps me create things like products like that for others. How do you try to influence the culture in terms of what you deliver to your customers? Have you got some kind of vision of how you what you do with that? Uh, oh man, I've never been asked that. <laughs> I don't know. Again, again, like I, I I've, I'm very big on just okay, what what is going to make make me happy in the moment or what would be fun to, to do in the moment. Yeah. And then that's what I do, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah. Okay. So when in your intro, you talked about freedom, where did your, where's your inspiration for the freedom come from? Well, it's just, I don't know. I, I, I guess it hit me from mostly when I was in business school and I just, there, there's so many things that, people get tied down right in jobs that they don't like. And they're like, well, I'll have a few, or I'll, I'll retire one day or, or they're working for the weekend. Right. And I was like, I don't, I don't want to waste so much of my life. Um, and for me, freedom, freedom comes when I can travel. Um, and it comes with doing, uh, make, making good memories, doing adventurous stuff and things like that. Um, you know, like swimming in waterfalls. Uh, we, we were recently like kayaking in these caves over in Thailand where you actually had to lay down in your kayak because if you didn't, you would hit your head on the ceiling. And so you're kind of like using your hands on the roof of the cave to like get through to this lagoon, you know, and, and being able to do things like that, especially with my family and people that I love is kind of like, like that's what I want my life to be made of moments like that. And so, um, so much like my parents, I watched them. I mean, they would take, they'd get one or two big weeks of vacation a year. And, you know, we'd go to like Albuquerque from California. And I was like, you know, nothing wrong with Albuquerque, but I just think like there's so much more out there and I want to be able to experience that. Yeah. So with your, with the business that you've got, you talked about having visited a lot of states in the US and you, to do this. so how do you manage to do your sort of run your business whilst you're traveling a lot is i take it you can do that with your business is that is that the point yeah totally yeah both with the photography and with with the cards and stuff like that i mean everything is we have a friend that will ship orders um that we pay to ship orders so for traveling she ships the orders so that there's no lag there um but i i'm well ahead of design so on the cards. So I designed the cards a couple months in advance so that if there comes a time like, Oh, we're going to go travel for a couple weeks in Thailand. I don't feel pressure that I have to make the cards. And even if I did, I could, uh, I could make those anywhere. Um, and honestly, give me a pen and a pencil and my phone and my laptop and I can, I can create cards with, with just those tools. Mm -hmm. Um, and as far as photography, I mean, it's just one of those things, you know, you work when you're, when you're hired to work. And so we, there would be, you know, if we, when my kids were younger, uh, we would say, Oh, we don't have a wedding this weekend. Let's go for, let's go 
drive Route 66. And so we would go drive, you know, drove to Chicago from Kansas City and drove the entire Route 66 from Chicago to Southern California. Um, and just the freedom to be able to do that and to work along the way. I mean, again, as, especially when you travel, I mean, that's a really good way to, to grow our photography business. I mean, I document you know, my family and, and my kids and, and, and our life. And I share that. And so that's other ways to, to use to, for marketing. Um, and, and because of the way that I documented our travel, I mean, that's how we, that's how we booked that Disney job and that Alamo job that, that I had talked about earlier is because, because they saw the work that we did when we're traveling and said, Oh, we want, we want to you to do that for us. Mm-hmm. Right. So, so what proportion of your time do you actually travel? Um, right now it's not as much as it was uh, a few years ago. We actually were planning to go, uh, to Europe for six months with our, with our kids, um, a year and a half ago. And we had spent like two years, uh, planning this trip and we, we had everything set up. We had, we had stopped taking work for photography for that time. Um, and then, uh, my son got sick and he, we couldn't figure out what was wrong and uh, we've, we've got it all figured out now, but two of our kids have cystic fibrosis. And so that, um, that transition and the, uh, what we've had to do with our life since then has not involved much travel, but we're at a point now where we can start to travel more, which is why we finally went to Thailand and things. So I would say we take maybe four to five trips a year with the kids, um, some of them are smaller. Some of them are bigger, like the Thailand trip. But um, yeah, and then my wife and I go on one or two trips a year by ourselves as well. My parents will watch the kids for us. So knowing what you know now, is there anything that if you'd known it when you started out would have helped you to shortcut the learning curve? Um, yeah, I would say that there's a lot of times where I would put doing off, put put off doing something that that kept coming up. Um, and for example, when we started our photography business, um, I was still working and we had health insurance and we had all of this stuff. And so I know now that if I would have just quit my job right away and put all of that time and energy that was draining me from the other job into something that I love, like photography, um, that our business would have grown a lot faster. And so I guess what I'm trying to say there is that like those little things that keep coming up, those ideas that keep coming up, those things that you feel in your, in your gut that you need to be doing, like the earlier you start doing those, no matter how scary they are, the, the better off you're going to be. Um, because anytime that I've, I've not listened to that, uh, and put those things off, I've found that there will be some sort of painful thing event that will happen that will lead me to making that decision anyway that I should have just made from the beginning. How much does gut feeling influence your decisions in your business? Oh, it's, it's, it's a lot. Like I really try and pay really close attention to, to what my intuition tells me. Um, I know I, I have a, a very strong belief in what I'm doing and, and I know that I know that everybody, um, has something that just drives them that they wake up in the morning, like, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And, and maybe they're doing it and maybe they're not for whatever reason, but like those things, are signs from, I don't know, whatever you choose to believe in. Um, but, but to me, those are signs like that, that come through the intuition, through the gut that like, you need to be doing this thing because that's, that's what you're here for. Um, and, and to listen to those, I've learned that the more I listen to them, uh, the, the better off I am, the happier I am. And, and that's not even necessarily to say that like, you're going to be, you're going to, everything is going to work out and there's not going to be any setbacks or challenges or, you know, like, cause again, like right now, um, the card company doesn't bring in as much money as we need to pay all of our bills. Right. But I'm extremely happy and fulfilled doing the work. And I know that I'm gonna get there at some point, you know, we'll get there. And, and the intuition kind of helps me, helps me make sure that I'm on that, the path, right? Like, if something doesn't jive with my values or whatever, there's going to be something that comes from within that says, Hey, um, maybe this isn't what you should be doing, or maybe you should be doing this. Life is made of constant change, whether we like it or not. And many people say the only constant in life is change. Josh, how do you try to keep up with change? Um, I would say that, uh, my wife and I set up a very clear set of values, um, that we want to live our life by. Um, some like little phrases that go along with them, like, um, create memorable family experiences, say yes to adventure, 
um, you know, be brave, be kind, be honest, things like that. And we have these values that we live with both in how in our work entrepreneurial life, as well as in our family life and our personal lives and things like that. And so I think that having very clear set of values like that, that you live your life, that, that, that kind of help guide your life will help you deal with that change because you're right. Like everything is changing all the time and it's changing really, really fast. And so some things work and then all of a sudden they don't. Um, uh, but I feel that like, as long as you have a very clear written down and like something that, you know, in your heart, like a value set that guides you, then you can deal with the change because you know that, okay, well, this is different now, but it's, but I can, I can do it because it falls under my values or I can, I can act this way because this is what my values, how they guide me and that they'll help better equip you to handle change. If that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. What is your favorite book on entrepreneurialism, business, personal development, leadership, or motivation? And can you tell us why you have chosen it? Oh man, that's a tough question. Cause I read, uh, Last year, I read 92 books. Okay. So I read a lot of books that kind of like span all over the place. So um, I touched on it earlier, but I mentioned The Power of Starting Something Stupid by Richie Norton. Mm-hmm. And as far as entrepreneurs go, that is by far my favorite business book I've ever read. Um, I have another book that I carry with me at all times as well. Um, and it's called You Are a Circle. And it's by a guy named, I don't even know how to pronounce his name, uh, Giamme Wolf, G-U-I-L-L-A-U-M-E. Um, and the whole title is, uh, you are a circle of visual meditation for the creative mind. And it's basically just little sentences and and little mantras and things like that. And anytime I'm feeling like I need some inspiration or a break, like you can flip through the book and open to any page and you're going to be expired, inspired. Mm -hmm. Um, but I would, I would say that as far as entrepreneurs go, I love the power of starting something stupid so much because it's just, it lays out exactly how to get a business going and to not worry about like if people say it's stupid, right? Like uh, Richie says a lot in there, he's like stupid is the new smart and how, how many ideas were looked at as being stupid, but are wildly successful. You know, he talked about Amazon and there's some other case studies in there, but like, I just, I, that book leaves me feeling encouraged and helps me deal with the, uh, the stresses that come along with being an entrepreneur. Everyone, when you have a busy life, listening to audiobooks is a great way to expand your knowledge in the time when you may be doing other things, such as driving or when you are at the gym. We have a special offer for you of a free audiobook of your choosing. To choose your free audiobook, go to www.freeaudiobookoffer.com. As long as you've not already signed up, then you will qualify. Josh, What I'd like to do with you now is to speculate about the future a little bit. What one thing would you do with your business if you knew that you could not fail? That's tough uh, because it's a a big question, right? Um, And I would say this year, um, specifically, I feel like my wife and I are doing the things that, that we're doing and trying to grow a business. Like we're going all in with the card company. Um, our money right now is really tight. Uh, medical costs are really high with the two kids of cystic fibrosis. Um, and so a couple of things that we're doing that I, that we're just trying, we're like, this is big, huge risks and leaps of faith for us is we're, we're, we're working with a local marketing company to help us grow our subscribers, our card subscribers. Um, as well as where we put down a lot of money to like build a booth and to go to the national stationary show in New York in May, which we've never done before. Um, and so those things, I feel like, uh, I wouldn't do them if, if I thought we were going to fail. If, does that make sense? Cause I don't know, I don't know where the money's coming from for these right now, but it's one of those things that it's like, if we're going to do this and this card company is going to be at what's going to basically pay all of our bills in the future. Like these are the really risky things that we have to do. Um, so yeah, cause I would love, I would love to get, get our cards into, you know, a big box retailer like target or, or something like that. Right. And I just, I, I don't know how to do that. So there's quite a few companies. I mean, certainly over here in the UK, there's quite a number of companies that have sprung up, which actually service people over the internet rather than retail. And they've done very well. Mm-hmm. Um, 
is it, surely there's opportunity for you to do that as well, isn't there? So, yeah, there is. And again, like it, cars is a very competitive market. Um, and there's also very low margin um, in them, right? Like it's a very low cost mm-hmm. item. And so you have to sell a lot of cards. And so um, what we're learning is that like if we can grow our subscriber base to enough, I mean, that's where we're getting 20 bucks every month from people um, for these cards. Like every month, it's just automatic. Um, and then again, like to get into more stores, you know, the more stores you're in, the more cards you're going to sell. And, and, and the time it takes me to create a card doesn't change based on how many we sell. Right. Yeah. So, um, we're also started, uh, I, I created a journal called the together journal that we launch actually our Kickstarter goes live tomorrow. Um, and so we're trying to find other things that I've, that, that I can brand that, or that I can make other products that might have more margin um, that also deal with the encouragement connection, letting people know that they're loved and this, so they fall under the same line as the greeting cards, but just maybe have some more margin. <laughs> what skill, if you were excellent at it, would help you the most to double your business? I would say uh, Facebook, understanding how Facebook ads work um, and just marketing in general on that. Like, uh, when I was getting my master's in entrepreneurship, um, in college, I, my, my worst grade was always in the marketing classes. And so it's one of those things that for the longest time we're like, well, I'm not good at it, but I'm good enough. And so I'll just do it all myself. And I'm learning now that like that, that's the skill that if I had, I feel we would, uh, be a, we easily double our money, probably triple or quadruple it. Um, I'm really good on social media. Um, but like, you know, I'm good with writing newsletters. And again, like I look at the stuff, the newsletters that I get and that I sign up for from people that I love. And I'm always like, I just want to buy everything that they talk about. You know, they're really good at that whole selling piece. And I feel I'm just not good at that. You know, I'm good at creating and not selling and marketing. Yeah. In five years from now, if a well-known business publication was publishing an article on your business after talking to your customers and suppliers, what would you like it to say? Um, I think that uh, I would love people to, to feel uh, happy. Um, And so I would like it to say that like, you know, that I did meaningful work and touched a lot of people's lives um, in times when they might be struggling or needed to hear a good, you know, hear something good. Um, That would, that would be pretty much it. Like I would love for it to just focus on that, that like that I touched a lot of people's lives, touched a lot of people doing meaningful things and um, put, put a lot of love out in the world. We are now at the part of the show where you share three golden nuggets with us. Josh, what okay. is your favorite quote and how have you applied it? Um, something I have uh, that sticks with me is I read a lot of Rumi and a lot of, a lot of love poetry. And so one of the things that I constantly say to myself is love is the bridge between you and everything. And that's a, that's a, a Rumi quote there. Um, but it, it reminds me to slow down and, and to close my mouth sometimes and open my ears, you know, and show compassion and listen to people. And, and just reminds me to, uh, to constantly, constantly put love at the forefront and let that drive everything that I do. Do you have any um, favorite online resources that you can share with us? Well, I love to read, uh, or not read, well, I used to love to read articles and stuff on the internet, but I, do, I listen to a lot of podcasts. And so, um, one of my favorite podcasts is on being, and every, every week you get, uh, a, either an hour interview or an hour and a half unedited one, depending on what you want to listen to. And it's all about mindfulness and, uh, Krista Tippett is the host and she just brings, so many interesting and amazing guests on there. And so I would say that that I've learned so much just from listening to the on being podcast every week. Okay. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. What is your best advice to other entrepreneurs? I would say make gratitude, uh, a a practice of gratitude, uh, first and foremost, like one of the most important things you do. Um, and by that, I mean, say thanks every single time you think about it. You know, I mean, how, how often do you think about somebody, right? They're like, Oh, this person, you know, uh, helped me do this at this time, or this person bought me lunch or this person did this. And that has made me feel 
good in this way, right? And then you don't tell them. Like you just say, oh, it was nice that they did that. And then you don't tell them. Um, and so I would say that like being grateful is to me like one of the most important things that I can ever, ever do. Um, and in my gratitude practice, you know, I feel has helped me become like a force of love and action. Um, and, and just like, there's so many times where, uh, someone will do something and, and I'll say thank you in the moment, but I always write, I love to write letters. I mean, which is why the green card company came about. And so I'm just writing a lot, like a handwritten letter, just taking the time out of my day to let people know that they did something that impacted my life. And just showing that gratitude is, has just been, I don't know, it feels good for, for, for me. And I imagine for the other person. Everyone, if you didn't manage to get a note of Josh's favorite resource or his favorite books, you can find the links on Josh's show notes page. Just go to the entrepreneurway.com and search for Josh or Josh Solar in the search box. Josh, is there anything else that you'd like to add about your business? No, I think we're good. I think we're good. I just, I just want to, uh, I guess, people to just know that, like, especially if you're starting a business um, or thinking about starting a business or wherever you are in your business journey, that like there's going to be some setbacks and there's going to be some struggles. But as long as you believe in what you're doing and you you're, you're have have fun with it, you know, like that nothing that you're going to do is going to cause so many or such a big problem in your life that you're not going to be able to overcome from that. And I think that it's better to try things and maybe fail or learn from them and, and get up and try again than to live a life filled with regret because you didn't try something. Josh, it has been an honor having you on the show. You've, you've certainly opened our minds to this concept of freedom. And you've said some really interesting things. In fact, the concept of using Instagram to actually test your creative designs is, is, is a great idea. So you, you've certainly inspired us all and given us a lot to think about. So thank you very much for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. You're welcome, Josh. Thank you. Thank you for listening to The Entrepreneur Way. Subscribe to our podcast and follow us on Twitter at Neil D. Ball.